hello 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 how's it going i'm julia and for this video i'm going to be talking about the three books that i have read this year um that aren't part of a series so yeah that's basically it um i've tried to film a couple of times the first trilogy that i read it's a trilogy of standalone series of standalones I don't know it's three books but um I read them I wasn't particularly fond of them I have had no motivation to talk about them so I thought I'm gonna move on and go back to them I finished them at the end of January it is now March 12th I think um so I've had no motivation to really do anything this year um it's just I, I don't know why I just have been in a slump I read a lot last year and now I'm just like I'm like eight books behind on my reading challenge on Goodreads I think I'm gonna change it because I don't know if I can do it again last year it was so it was such a different time. It was such a different year. Obviously, it was different for everyone. We were in lockdown. I didn't do anything. Um, I literally just read. So, yeah. I'm going to do reviews now. I hope you enjoy it. The first book that I read was Matt Haig's The Midnight Library. This took me 18 days to read, and this is what I'm talking about when I'm like, I had no motivation to read or do anything. I can usually, like, whip through a book pretty quickly, depending on how long it is. It could take me two to three days. If it's longer than three, four hundred pages, it could take me a week or so. Um, I don't know if you, if any of you watched my reading vlog for the midnight sun but that took me like three weeks and that was a i think 600 pages unnecessarily long in my opinion but i thought it was okay we're not reviewing midnight sun julia um so yeah this follows nora nora is having a shit day the night before her cat dies and she goes to work and her boss is like, you're fired, you need to do something else with your life, which I feel like is kind of messed up. Like, you can't fire someone for not doing what you think they should be doing, but that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe, I don't think he fired her for that, though. I think she would just kind of, like, slack a lack in because she's depressed. So I just read the chapter where her boss fires her and he basically says that he's firing her because she should have more freedom and she's basically too good for this job but he also thinks she's too sad and he doesn't want her putting off customers and looking like a wet weekend. Her face looking like a wet weekend. I don't particularly know what that means. <laughs> But, um, that's why he fired her, which I think is kind of fucked up. And then she goes to the store and this dude yells at her that she knew in, like, high school or something. One of her brother's friends. He yells at her. She goes home and she's like, yo, what do I have left? Like, my brother won't talk to me. My cat's dead and I don't have a job. Um, so she's like, I'm going to kill myself. And then she writes a note and she wakes up in the in-between and it is a library and at this library she goes in and there's a librarian there that she knew like her freshman year of college I think and um she tells her about the library and that she has a book of regrets and that she can live out her regrets while she's here and basically no, no time passes in this life so like she's still she could be here in the library for years and she'll still be in the 
in between in real life. Does that make sense? I hope it does. It made sense to me. Basically, no time passes in the life that she's killed herself in. She hasn't died, but she's not alive either. So, while she is doing, like, she's living out her regrets, it's like, would, what would have happened if she would have become, if she would have stuck with swimming, if she would have dated that guy, if she would have stayed in that band that she was in, um, if she would have gone, if she would have picked a different job in college, if she would have, like, picked something different to study, um, like, even, like, tiny things, like, there was one where she was, like, what would have happened if my cat didn't die and i gave this four stars <laughs> um i didn't hate this i actually really enjoyed it i think it was good that i didn't whip through this um because i got to savor it a little bit more than other books that i read like because i like if i don't read them quickly i forget so this I don't it's not forgettable like you're going to remember this book it was beautifully written and it is like it's a lesson book like you read it and you're like yeah like this but I think at the time I wasn't in the right headspace to be reading it I think you have to be in a good headspace to read a book about a girl who wants to kill herself and she has to go through all of these lives to understand that every decision she made was the right one. At least that's the way that I took it. I think this can be interpreted in so many different ways. It depends on who you are and your take on, I think, life and mental illness and regrets. And, um, yeah, so... I did really enjoy this. I think the one thing that I didn't like, and I think it was why I only gave I only gave it four stars. Not that four stars isn't a good rating, but I didn't like the stop and go of the story. So like the some chapters are really short and some chapters are really long, and it depends on what life she's in and how much she should be there so she like is like she can feel it when she's leaving and going back to the library and so it was a lot of we're in a life we go back to the library we're in another life and I didn't like the stop and go I guess would you I would you consider this time travel I don't know but I did really enjoy it I just I don't think it was like my cup of tea at the time, um, but I do recommend this. I think Matt Haig beautifully writes this and his other book, Reasons to Stay Alive. Those are the only two that I have. These are the only two that I have. Um, I also have How to Stop Time, but I haven't read it yet. And I don't know if I'm going to like it because there's time travel, but... I think the dude stays in this one, excuse me, in like this one time because he falls in love with a girl and he's not supposed to. Anyway, <laughs> the next book that I read is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. This is a children's book. I got it at Target. Um, on sale like every other book at Target is on sale um I it was a, everywhere last year and um I just I didn't get it and I don't know why I think it was because it was like $26 at Barnes and Noble and I was like I I'm gonna wait <laughs> so I waited and I got it for like 10 or 11 dollars less at target um it says 22 on here though so i don't know if i'm wrong it was like more expensive at, at barnes and noble though i don't know why 
I remember seeing the number 26. Not that any of this matters. Anyway, this follows a boy, a mole, a fox, and a horse. And this little boy talks to all these characters about life and love and hugs and just everything. And it was so sweet. The illustrations in this are beautifully done. Like, look at that. It's so pretty. I don't really know, like how else to like what else to say about this it was just it was beautiful I loved it read it to your child I showed some stuff to my mom um and she thought it was cute I didn't read her the whole thing <laughs> um being kind to yourself is one of the greatest kindnesses said the mole often the hardest person to forgive is yourself like it was just so sweet and then, okay, this is my favorite. It says, I've discovered something better than cake. No, you haven't, said the boy. I have, replied, replied the mole. What is it? A hug. It lasts longer. <laughs> like, I, seriously, this is worth every penny. It was so good. It was so cute. It was the sweetest. I'm going to read this to all of my future children, my niece and nephews um that will come eventually so i'm a highly recommend and it's super fast it's a children's book i think i read it in like 15 minutes it's not that long probably less than that i always clap <laughs> the last book third and final is the x talk by rachel lynn solomon and this follows Shay Goldstein, who has been at this radio station for 10 years as a producer and in waltzes Dominic, who has just graduated from college. He always mentions something and I can't remember what it is. Oh, I, could have, I literally could have just read the back. He got a master's degree in journalism and um he wants to report things that will change the world that people want to listen to like politics and things like that and hi also I just want to add super quickly that um Dominic kind of he comes off from college and he starts this job and he kind of thinks that he's going to be doing news worthy things like politics and things that are going on in the world and not kind of shows that are like having someone bring in a dog trainer to talk and then to start the x talk he doesn't think it's newsworthy he doesn't want to do it and he kind of has like a sense of entitlement because of his master's degree and he constantly mentions and it does piss off Shay because she's like, dude, I've been here for 10 years. And I don't even think he realizes he does it, but I just wanted to mention that because I feel like it's important to the story, so. He's only been there for a couple of months when they find out that the radio station is making cuts and they could be part of that because her show, Puget Sounds, I think that's how you say it, um, is being cut. And so she needs to, they need to think of a new show so that they can stay. Which brings up the X talk. So Kent, their boss, is like, you guys are going to pretend to be exes and do this show. You're going to talk about, um how you guys broke up and the problems in the relationship and you're gonna bring in psychologists and like they're gonna do q and a's and stuff like that's what this is about it was one girl's idea i can't remember her name she's not like a huge character but she ends up being a producer for the show and as they're doing this um they start to catch feelings, you know, because why wouldn't they? And she's having troubles with it. He's having troubles with it. 
and it just creates problems because they're trying to be exes, but they like each other. So that's what this is about. Um, I really liked this. I think it's one of my new favorites. I'm not like positive yet. I did read it like a month ago, but I liked it a lot. I know that face didn't seem like I liked it a lot, but I did. I liked how their relationship, it wasn't rushed and it wasn't like insta-love and it also wasn't so drawn out that I didn't believe in the relationship and their feelings. So I really liked that. Um, it was fun reading snippets of the radio show. Like, I don't know if any of it was real or she like did her research on radio, but it was fun like getting snippets of the X talk and how a radio station might work. I really liked that. Um, Cause you know, everyone, everybody listens to radio. My uh, radio station, they do a thing called War of the Roses where they call, a person calls in thinking that their significant other is cheating on them so they call in and they're like I think so and so is cheating on me and they're like all right we'll call him we're gonna give him free a free dozen roses and we'll see who he sends them to and then he either sends them to his significant other or someone else and he's caught cheating on the radio and I love it a lot so I thought that was like this would like it sounds super fun it does to like to listen to this I would love that um so I want to talk about Shay a little bit I liked her I liked her less than Dominic be just because I don't know um she seemed a little immature at times and it was kind of annoying because she is older than him and I don't know, I just feel like older people should be more mature than younger people and that's not always the case. And that's okay, but it was just frustrating because she did, she acted like a child at times. And not that some of her actions weren't justified at certain points, but some of it was kind of like, you're an adult, talk this out. Same with her friend Amina. <sighs> Amina was kind of, I did not, she was fine up until a certain point, and then I was like, girlfriend, that was messed up, that was rude, and I didn't like her anymore, and I was thinking, I would never be her friend again, but they become friends again, spoiler alert, um, <laughs> she does, like, uh, Shay does go through, she's going through it, like, she... Her mom is getting remarried to another man. Her dad has been dead for 10 years and she started radio because of him. Like they used to do their own little radio shows and she always says how he had the perfect radio voice and she doesn't. So she's super insecure about that. And like she's just, and then she has Dominic who she's trying not to like but likes and they have to do the whole exes thing but they're sleeping together and you know it's rough it's a hard knock life um <laughs> dominic i loved dominic loved him i want one i wanted dominic um i honestly wish we would have gotten his point of view for a lot of it because the they break up she breaks up with him at one point and it's a dumb reason and I kind of like like it total like one of her immature moments is like when they break up the first time it totally could have been communicated but it's not she's just like I'm just gonna break up with it and they like it's pointless and it's dumb but I really I love Dominic and I would have loved his point of view when that happened and also for a couple of other things, like, the, like, big breakup, I would have liked his point of view. Because what happens, 
he has stage fright and something happens on the stage and she's like stuck and he's sitting there stuck like can't talk and she's just like saying everything and it was really sad I think he actually runs off the stage and it kind of broke me but I would have liked his thoughts this is like one of the downsides to only having one point of view which I don't like um he was super charming and funny and he was really he was just that likable dude I liked him he is obsessed with cast iron skillets which I completely understand <laughs> those things are great my mom has two of them or no she has three of them and then we have little mini ones to make like brownies and stuff like they do at like restaurants and they're so good like they just they make everything better highly recommend getting a cast iron skillet um he makes pizza in his i've never done that but i kind of want to try um but he was just i just loved him i thought he was funny i thought he was nice to her dog and i knew when he was nice to her dog i was like keep him if he's nice to your dog keep him I'm just saying but the ending after they break up and they get back together it's a huge like pda thing on the radio and it made me super uncomfortable like i'm not a huge fan of pda i did not like that at all um they do like cut like they like get off air and that made it slightly better but I don't like that. I don't like PDA. And every time it happens in a book, I'm like, I get secondhand embarrassment. And I'm like, dear Lord, please stop. I don't want it anymore. I need you to stop. I need authors to stop doing it. But all in all, I really liked this. Highly recommend. Um, that's it. Those are the three books that I've read. Um, I hope you enjoyed Comment down below if you've read these, if you liked them, tell me your thoughts. If you didn't like them, let's talk. Maybe I agree with you on certain things. Maybe I disagree with you on certain things. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All that jazz. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye!